Okay, so today is daily cyber number 95. Uh, what have we got going on this morning? Uh, my cleaner's in, so you probably hear a little bit in the background, uh, some noise and stuff that's going on, uh, maybe even some vacuuming. Uh, my audio is actually starting to get better. I've created up, I've jimmied up a solution where my H1 recorder is actually on a stand, and if you saw the main uh, thumbnail for this video, you actually saw that, uh, the setup that I'm using. Uh, I'm in conversation with Zoom right now. Uh, they have another solution potentially that you can hook up the H1 recorder directly to the iPhone. So how this comes down to cybersecurity is just hacking. Hacking the systems that you're using to make them better, more efficient, you know, trying to figure out the better way of doing it. So that's why I'm doing the better audio, just to kind of get clear audio, more, more clean and crisp as well as, so I don't have to wear like a loud microphone uh, all the time. Uh, I will be doing it as I kind of go through other things, but right now this is probably one of the easiest solutions, especially now it's because it's on my Joby stand and all that, so I can kind of move around and do certain things, right? So I can do certain things as I'm going and have this great solution that I have a Loom Cube light, which is illuminates me and then everything else. So pretty cool. Right now it's 10, 20 roughly, uh, and I'm gonna be getting into studying uh, Again, I'm just looking over here on my on my computer. Uh, give me a second here. What I gotta cover today uh, and get get through and master this. Uh, I gotta get through 5.1, actually 5 5.0, which is access control and identi identity management. 5.1, I'm almost finished. I gotta do 5.2 and 5.3 today. Get that out of the way, and then the last one which we'll see by tomorrow, tomorrow's, uh, yeah, see by tomorrow. I can do six, which is cryptography, 6.2, 6.3, and then I'm gonna go back through everything just quickly again, just to make sure I've got everything. I made some notes as I was going through, uh, things on the areas that I need to review, uh, but hopefully by the end of July, I'll be able to write my second, my third test, and then third time's a charm, pass that, underway and then start working on Certified Ethical Hacker. So really excited uh, about getting going. Uh, what else did I want to talk about today? Um, that's really about it right now. I uh, don't have any kind of words of wisdom or anything like that, but actually, you know what, I actually do. I was watching Gary Vaynerchuk this morning and one of the things he was talking about in his VIP master, VIP I won't call him mastermind, but VIP group that he sends out emails to. He was talking about sometimes in life you have to take a step backwards. And right? so if you have to take one step forward, two steps back to really re redevelop yourself. So that's for me, it's going back into IT, doing IT security, doing that, and going back and study and doing that, taking a step back versus trying to go in the industry and work and get a job and do all that. Taking a step back, educate myself, and then get back into the industry you're going to see better results doing that because you're building a stronger foundation. Uh, even Peg and I remember watching one of his uh, training videos um, and they were talking about buildings, all right, skyscrapers. You know, a third of the building is actually in the foundation right, versus what goes up into the sky. And he was talking about that is the reason why a third of the building goes down is just to they create a real deep foundation so they can grow this massive building on. Well, why wouldn't we think about that when we're building success, we're building our business? Why not build a strong, deep foundation that we can grow on, right? And be focused, have like one solid foundation. I, and I bring that into in point where I do it as well sometimes, where you're trying to juggle multiple things, right? And because you're trying to see what's going to you know, work, what's going to hit and what's going to work. Focus on one, build the foundation, grow it out test the measurable results, and then if you need to switch, switch. Where I see like people are like, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do, and I'll, I'll use social media marketing because I was in that field for so long. I'm gonna do YouTube marketing and video marketing and do all that, but oh, you know what, I'm gonna do podcasts and do this, and I'm gonna do content writing and do that. Okay, so when are you actually gonna see clients? Oh, no, no, that's okay, I can, I can do all this and then see clients. It's like, well, if you wanna build your foundation, find one that one, you like to do, two, what your clients relate to, and then three, what you're going to be able to be consistent in for and with social media marketing you want to do that for at least six months to one year right to get really good results 
But when it comes to IT, I mean, you want to spend some time. Like, and who knows? It could be 60 days, 90 days, uh, six months, one year, developing that foundation. So when you get on the industry, you know a good foundation that you can build on and be successful. That means maybe in your career, that could be um, in your business, if you're opening up a business as a consultant, whatever you decide to do, just take a step back. Now, I'm not saying, I want to be very clear, I'm not saying quit your job, do all that. If you're working really hard and you're in a full-time position, maybe it's that stepping back is taking some time on the evenings and weekends that maybe you do other things, spending half an hour to you know, maybe to an hour each night, reestablishing yourself, saying, you know what, I know this, but I can take a step back and relearn these areas or go into this other area and be a, a newbie and, and really kind of put my ego aside, put everything aside that, you know, I know this. No, I'm going to go in and just listen and learn from people that know this area and not bring in that, oh, hey, I'm, I'm this network master engineer and I know all this stuff. No, go like, hey, I don't know. I'm a student. Teach me. Teach me this one area and go to meetup groups, go to events, go to co uh, conferences, you name it. Just be that newbie and then develop that skill set. So just something to think about. I know uh, this is about six minutes long now, but uh, roughly about six minutes. But I'm going to cut off there, get some studying done, and then I'll keep in touch and to let you know how the day goes. Okay, so I studied this morning. Uh, got some good studying in. Uh, just give me a second. I'm just pulling my notes here. I uh, finished 5.2. I was in the middle of it. Just finished 5.2. Uh, again, 5.0, just to recap access control and identity, uh, identity management. Yeah. And then uh, 5.2 was given a scenario select the appropriate auth authentication, authorization, or access control. And that one was a little bit longer and kind of got me a little caught up. So I got to review that one after. Uh, after I do finish 5.3 this afternoon, get about 20 minutes, half an hour of that, and then I'm going to go back through 5.2 again and study that for a day or two just to make sure I have that down. So that's what I'm really working on. Uh, I'm still waiting to see if I can get this book uh, through Safari Books Online. Come on, Safari Books Online, come through, come through. Because right? I don't want to have to start paying for other books if I'm already paying for a book service. And I mean, you completely understand. Uh, but if I have to grab it, I'll grab it. Uh, it's uh, CompTIA Security, Get Certified, Get Ahead. That's the book. It's by Daryl Gibson. Uh, you can get it, uh, chapters, Amazon, kind of all over the place. Uh, now, if you're not doing the exam, I think it's in uh, uh, between now and September, then I recommend you, and I'm, I'm really debating about this, I, what I would recommend because... I don't know when the next version's coming out of CompTIA Security Plus because uh, they're CompTIA is actually revising the exam, and there's going to be I think it's called uh, SY0-501. So you really have to see where you are. If you're writing before September, grab this book. If not, maybe it might be a good res uh, resource to get it and then get the the next one coming out, whichever one comes out uh, after this. Just trying to see if there is another version. See if there is a five point. No, there's not yet. Which which makes sense. So you might want to grab this one, the four point four zero one. Grab this version, read it through cover to cover, and make sure you know everything inside and out. And then when if you're running past September, grab the one of the newer versions and see what the differences are. I think it'll be easier and you can use both as resources. Now that depends up to you. You might have a resource, Safari Books Online, that you can grab, just read the old one. Hopefully it's out by then. And then hopefully they can get the new one so you can do that. So just some recommendations. Uh, but study, study, know as much as you can. Uh, other than that, that's not really all that I've been up to this morning. This afternoon I just got to get some more studying done. And that's about it. So I'm just finishing off my day. Uh, like I said before, I got some studying done. Uh, had a busy afternoon. I actually watched a, it was I guess a uh, made for movie or made for TV movie on uh, cyberbullying. A really interesting take on it. Problem was it made they made it a little bit too Hollywood in the sense that you know everyone was happy at the end and the bully made up with the person they were harassing and everyone was happy. It was kind of like that, but. What made me think 
and to bring this up right now when it comes to cyberbullying is that know your laws in the area. Know what the laws are for cyberbullying. Make sure you, if, you know, your student, you're going to school, or your parent have kids that go to school. Talk to the school, talk to the school board. See what they do. See how they engage if one of your children gets abused by cyberbullies. See what you can do. Ask lots of questions. Ask like the local police department, what do they do and what's the laws. Just make sure you educate yourself and inform yourself because, I mean, knock on wood, you know, hopefully your kids never have to deal with that. But just in case, you want to make sure you know the rules and also you know what to do in those situations. Uh, like, for example, some people delete the profiles or delete the message. I would say capture as much evidence as you can. Right? Screen capture everything. Uh, don't comment, don't get engaged, just capture everything. You know, I know with, with, with the kids and teenagers, it's emotional and they want to react. But take a step back, take a deep breath, and capture as much information you can, collect a file, and save that file. Don't edit the images, don't do anything like that, but just save that file so that what happens is you save it on, like, on a USB. Save it to areas like on your hard drive and a USB. So what happens in that USB, you can give it to the police detective, whatever they have to investigate. So. Just a little bit about cyberbullying, uh, and it's hard because sometimes it's students, you know, in the school, or some people are creating false accounts and trolls, whatever that may be. Just know it's not about you. You know, talk to as many people if you are a victim of cyberbullying. Talk to as many people as you can. Talk to friends. Talk to family. Talk to you know your teachers. Talk to the police. Talk to as many people that can get as much support as you can. So that's it for my video today. Uh, I just want to, you know, talk a little bit about cybersecurity, but I'm going to go in that probably a little bit deeper as I, I go into that area of security, uh, of IT or cybersecurity, which I've covered before, but I'll go in deeper later, if, especially if someone asks me any questions. So that's it for my video today. Don't forget, software is hackable, being connected is vulnerable. I'll see you next video.